There we go. We are live. Sorry about the delay. All right, guys. Only a couple of minutes late. Not bad at all. Four minutes. Had some technical difficulties, so I'll turn down the volume so I don't hear myself talking. And welcome to the chat. I'm going to let some people join before we get rolling into anything. Got a few things on the table we're going to talk about. Trying to get them all in frame. I'm still not used to doing this on my phone. But we'll work on it. Okay, so we're going to do something a little different tonight. What's up, Freedom Van? Good evening. There's five people in the chat right now. You're the only one that's commented. So everybody drop in and say hello that you're here on the chat. We're going to do something a little different tonight. We're going to talk about... Usual stuff, knives and guns and, you know, stuff like that. New stuff we got in. And then we're actually going to do a live knife sale tonight. Um, I was going to do a knife sale video. And I decided to um, just do it live. Because that way I don't have to do two videos tonight. <laughs> so, nope, not not selling a Sebenza. None of the knives in front of you are for sale, FYI. I haven't brought those out yet. I will be... Um, in a little while, like probably probably halfway through the stream, I'll do um, the knife sale. So for right now, these are just some knives that I've had in my collection for a long time that we're going to talk about. Um, so just stay tuned for the knife sale. There's only like four knives for sale tonight, not a ton. That's why I'm not doing a whole separate video. So what's up, Jeff? What's up, Landon and Clark? Not Clark, huh? Interesting. Um, yeah, that Griptilian is, uh, got the Flytanium carbon fiber scales on it. That's, the scales are new to me. The knife is actually one of the oldest knives in my collection. That's what we're talking about a little bit tonight is some really old knives that have stuck around a long time. Uh, it's actually my son's. Technically, it's got his initials engraved there when I bought this from Knife Works a long time ago. Um, back when the Douglas grips were made. This is M390 steel. I had his initials put on there and I gave him this as his first knife and it had the original like orange scales and then I bought some G10 scales and then I decided to upgrade to these. I wanted to try these um, mini grips. The Flytanium Carbon Fiber is a new release from them and they're, they're pretty nice. They have some voids in them though, which the carbon fiber is not the highest quality at all. I will tell you that right now. You can kind of see some of the voids in the carbon fiber. Um, I'd have to do some close-ups, but there's that tends to happen in carbon fiber, but that's the only disappointing thing. Other than that, the, the scales are really nice. Um, I don't, you know, the AWT scales, I had them. I don't love aluminum scales. I don't love aluminum as a knife handle material though. So um, no landed, it is M390. It's a Ritter grip. They don't make them anymore. Um, but they did a run of these in M390 a few years ago, I think. So it's actually got a, um, I think it's either a roll right here or a chip. It's been, my son used it at scout camp back when I had the G10 scales and he probably didn't treat it very nice. What's up, Damien? Um, there is some titanium scales out there um, made by Flytanium, actually. Same company does carbon fiber, so. Yep, so we're going over um, knives that have been in my collection for a long time. But before we get into that, I'm going to um, kind of move them to the side. And we're going to just kind of talk about some new acquisitions. I actually did some videos on some of the new knives I got in this in this um, month. Not month. Some of the videos I've uploaded recently have actually been filmed a while ago. Um, but that buck, that buck Spitfire that I got a video on, I did a video on, I... I had to end up returning the knife because the detent was so bad on it. I ended up returning it to the dealer. So, cool. I'm glad she chose the paramilitary too. That's a pretty big, um, pretty big knife. Wish aluminum was used more on budget knives. Steel handles are too heavy. Yes, they are. I agree. Um, but I think you should just use G10. It's way lighter. So, or even FRN. Um, but. We'll go over some new acquisitions. Um, nice, Freedom Van. So I got a Glock 48 this week. That was a new acquisition. 
This is the new single stack. Um, larger than the 43, obviously. This is the 48. This is the longest barrel uh, in the Slimline series, but it has the same grip as the 43X. And it's a 10 round magazine. And this gun is super nice. I'm doing a video. I've got a few videos. I shot my first 100 plus rounds through it. It shoots really nice. I did upgrade the sights on it because the you know we all know how bad the uh, stock Glock, Glock sights are. So I put the Ameriglow hack thorns on here. They're only about 62 bucks on Amazon, and they're really nice. I really like the sights quite a bit. This gun shoots so well. It's just a dream to shoot. It's so nice. It's like a Glock 19, but with a thin grip. Um, the reason why I bought this, so you guys know, is. A, I like Glocks, and I've had many, many Glocks, and I just hadn't, didn't have one in my collection, so I want another one. But there's a company called Shield Arms, if you follow them on Instagram, and they've done quite a few innovative products, and they're making a 15-round... What's up, Gracie? Gracie EDC has got my, my all, one of my all-time favorite EDC knives. Oh, I'm glad it's in good hands, though. Um, Glock 48, uh, so the Shield Arms. Shield Arms is making a 15 round flush magazine for this gun and the 43X. Flush fit, all metal. So if you look at the mag, you can tell that it's actually not a, a true single stack. And if you were to take out this liner, you know, they use the polymer magazine with the uh, steel liner and make it just all steel, you could, you know, fit more rounds in there. And they're doing a 15 round flush fit mag. Um, Matt, I'm not sure what to tell you about sound quality because it's the same way I record all my videos, so I can't imagine it not being good. That's weird. It's, it could be a streaming thing. I don't know. Um, I don't know why that would be the case. Let me, let me turn up the volume on my phone. That's strange. It's the same microphone. Okay, not bad for you. So maybe it's just you, Matt. Um, so yeah, I picked one up to get when those Shield magazines come out and the 15-round flush mag. So you're basically gonna have a slim Glock 19. That's gonna be awesome. And this gun shoots amazing. So I got that this week, and I've got a, um, I've got a uh, holster coming as well from the same company that I got this holster from. That's good that it's better. I, I'm not far away from the mic. I'm in the exact same position when I record videos. So that's weird. Um, this is the holster I got for my Sig 365. It's a appendix carry rig made by McKinnitech holsters um, out of California. And I've got one coming for the 48. I started carrying an appendix for the first time. Really, really high quality um, rig. Carries really nicely, very comfortable. It's adjustable height, has the nice claw to kind of hold everything. It contours well to your body, uh, conceals really well. And it's actually surprisingly comfortable. I've never, I've never appendix carried before. So I decided to give it a try. And this um, is the only type of holster I've used for appendix. I've tried other ones. This is a really comfortable way to carry, and yeah, I've got another one coming for the 48. And if you're interested in his holsters, they're really high quality. I have a discount code for the channel. Um, it's just my channel name, EDC Gear and Gun Reviews is one word, and you can go to his website. I'll put a link in the description once this video is uploaded, where you can get 15% off any holster. He makes um, appendix carry, he makes inside the waistband, outside the waistband, the whole nine yards for a ton of different guns. So. Got that in, and then I also got two holsters in from MIE Productions. You guys know I do a lot of, um, yeah, Clark, I, or, sorry, I call you Clark, but you mean actually maybe Kark. <laughs> sorry if that's your name or I think that's misspelled or something, but um, I, that 48 is carries nice. I actually got a chance to try it in the panic trade before I bought it, so. Um, I got a couple of MIE Production holsters in. I'm doing a video on these. A lot of people were asking about these. This is the video or for the Olight PL Mini 2 with the SIG 365 rail adapter I did a video on. That's this holster. I've got a video uploaded, just hasn't gone live yet. And then this one is for the TLR6 for the uh, P365, which I don't have on the gun right now because it's in that appendix rig. But this uh, MIE makes the production, makes the uh, holsters for the new TLR6 for the P365. So I've got a couple new I got three new holsters in this week. It's pretty crazy. Um, other than that, I think that was it. I mean, I got a new gun and new holsters. So nothing really new knife related besides that buck that I had to return, which sucks. But um, Okay, so one thing I want to talk about, uh, we'll talk about all the gun stuff first and get into the knives. And you're going to be like, that's just a random box of 9mm ammo. This is the cheapest ammo you can buy at Walmart right now. It's $7.99 a box. 
which equates to about 15 cents a round. And it's just Remington UMC. It's been around for a long time. It's pretty crazy to think that 9mm is down to $8 a box when it used to be 10 bucks and that was a good deal. We're all the way down to 8 bucks, And this stuff fired 100% flawlessly through my Glock. So I'm going to stock up on this. It's at your local Walmart. It should be about 8 bucks a box. You know, no rebates or anything. A lot of the ammo deals I've been posting on my Facebook page from Pub Melted Armory and stuff are rebates on Federal and CCI and stuff. This is no rebate required, just 8 bucks. So just a heads up, in case you didn't know that, that Walmart has... 9 millimeter for freaking eight dollars a box pretty crazy okay so we're going to talk about some knives here and all of these knives are ones that have been in my collection the longest of any of my knives that i have right now and you guys know that i sell um buy sell and trade life knives like all the time i don't hold on to stuff terribly long but we're going to kind of do like a little game i guess i don't know in the comments section, tell me which knife of these knives on the table has been in my collection the longest. Tell me what you think um, of these knives has been in my collection the longest. And hopefully the, yeah, the comments are still going. Okay. Curious to what you guys think. 940 is a good guess. It's not, not correct, though. That is not correct. It's been in there for a long time, since 2017, so... The green one is actually not correct. It's a um, customized ZT0095 uh, with Cerakote and the whole Mandalorian Boba Fett thing. It has been in the collection a long time, but not the longest. So, um, uh, Someone said the Sabenza. That's actually a good guess. It's actually not right, though. Um, it looks like it's the oldest knife in my collection because it's been so used. But it's one of the oldest. Um, but no, the Benchmade and the CRK and this um, are not put these over here so that should tell you something right there if you mean the benchman on the left yeah you mean the 940 so that's that's been around a while but it's not the oldest it's the zt well there's two zts out there and there's also a another benchmade and there's two other benchmades obviously it's not the bug out so it's because that's been around probably a year or longer but all of these knives have um been in my collection for a long long time and yes well they're both titanium so <laughs> it's this zt correct the 0900 four years almost the river grip is not quite as long as this knife but this knife has been around for four years and if you look at it you can tell man it's been sharpened quite a bit it's got scratches all over the blade um i mean i put a nice wicked edge on it not too this is like one of the first knives i met i um sharpened on the wicked edge but look how good the action is still after all these years four years of a lot of use a lot of carry um love the 0900 i hate that it got discontinued so one of the i think one of the better knives and back when zt uh no i did not sell the bug out the aftermarket scales it's this bug out right here i just sold the scales because I like the, I actually like, I love how lightweight this knife is. This is my dedicated, like, sweatpants, gym short knife. And it, I just like it that it has to be that light. But I've had the ZT-0900 in my collection longer than any of them, these. Then it goes the, I'll do the order, it, it goes something like this. It's the 0900, it's the Ritter Grip, it's then the Sabenza, and then I believe... The 940, the 099095 that's customized, and then the bug out. But all over, over a year. I've had them all over a year, which is crazy, right? So all the other knives I have in my collection, I have had less than a year. And that's there's not a lot. There's a lot that aren't on the table right now. Oh, I forgot to throw this in too. Um, I don't I don't do, typically do a ton of videos on fixed blades and stuff. I do have a lot of fixed blades. Um, but I've had this Survive Knives GSO 4.1, I think it is, for a very long time. What's up, Jet Fuel EDC? Knife Crazy, what's going on? Hey, Sean. Or Sean, someone else. Sean is Jet Fuel EDC, apparently. And Damon is Damon. But I've had this GSO um, Survive or this Survive Knives forever. This is seriously like the best fixed blade I've ever had, and I will never part with it. I've resharpened it. It's in 3V steel. Um, I use it constantly when I'm out in the outdoors. I mean, it's what I always take with me. So... Survive knives, they're super hard to get and they're not cheap, but I tell you, I've had it for years and years and beat on it and nothing has ever happened to it. It's been awesome. 
I never had any edge damage or anything on this guy, so I'm gonna put it back in its sheath. Actually, that's not even the original sheath. It's just a leather sheath, so. Okay, so another fun game for you guys, since we're chatting. What do you guys think, and then, of all the, I mean, think about, think about the major production knife brands, right? Which brand do you think I have reviewed the most on my channel? I was going back through my videos, and I've done over a thousand videos since I've been on YouTube. Uh, that is not a skinny grain on that on that fixed blade. That is a hollow ground, and it is um, it has a convex edge on it though that I did put on there. So, so what knife brand of all the major knife brands do you think I've reviewed more than any other knife brand in the last? God, and I've been doing this for six years since 2013. So, which what do you guys think? Give me your guesses below. I'm not going to tell you. Uh, I got one guess right there at Benchmade. Um, but just Spyderco, that's a good guess. Good guess. That's one of the highest. I'll tell you that. I'm talking about on my channel, by the way. Not just any channel, but my channel. What knife company, production knife company, have, have I reviewed the most? <laughs> Master Up. I have done 11 Master Up um, videos. I actually counted them. Now, some of these are they're a little skewed because if it like even if I sold a knife and it had the knife brand name in there, but they're ba they basically just involved in any video essentially, so they're not all necessary reviews. But um, Kaiser's a good guess. I was actually shocked at how many Kaisers I've reviewed. It's pretty crazy. I was pretty shocked. Um, right, again, it's not. Technically, how many videos I've done on Kaiser knives? Let's just put it that way. I'm going to keep it broad. Videos I've done on Kaiser. It could be a sale video. It could be um, a knife that I reviewed, you know. So keep guessing. There's a lot of there's a lot of brands out there. Okay, and then, so let's turn the table. So, okay, well, let's go with the top one. So someone said it already. It is in the comments. And it is ZT and Kershaw tied at 51. Holy cow. I've done 51 videos on ZT knives and 51 videos on Kershaw. And again, those could just be any kind of video. But seriously, that's a ton. Uh, second was Spyderco at 48. Pretty close. Someone said Benchmade. That was actually not as high as Kaiser. Ky or Benchmade was 34. Oh, wait, maybe it was higher than Kaiser. Where are my Kaiser stats? Oh, no. I've done 37 videos on Kaiser. More than Benchmade, surprisingly. Now, 34 that I'm counting, I have a couple, I have another Benchmade video coming out soon that hasn't been gone live yet, so that's it is counting that, but. Okay, so, who do you think um, I reviewed the least of all brands? Who do you think I reviewed the least? It'll, it'll, uh, this one's actually kind of hard, and I don't even know. <laughs> Okay, forget that. I have reviewed quite a few Microtechs, actually. Um, I've reviewed a lot of CRKTs. I've done... I, I did stats on a lot of these. 20 CRKT videos, so I've done a lot more. Maybe not the least. Maybe let's do... Um, well, actually, of the ones that... <laughs> I've never done a Z Hunter. That's a Nick Shabazz thing. Hinder, I've actually done 21 videos on Hinders over the years. It's a lot. Gerber, I've only done a few, so that's probably right. Or or Buck would be a good guess, too. Medford, yes. I think I've done one video on Medford maybe the entire time I've had my channel. So that's probably a good best, good bet. Okay, who can tell me, since we're playing this game, who can tell me the first knife that I ever reviewed on YouTube? This is going to be, like, a test of who's been around a long time. And you can take guesses. Um... Uh, it's, it was back in 2013. No bud case. <laughs> I have not reviewed any bud case. Um, most of it, uh, warning hinder of mine is actually in another room. I'm not, I, don't, I didn't have enough room on the table tonight. Sorry. I would have, I've had that from, for almost a year. PM2 is a good guess. It's not correct. This is an old knife. It hasn't been in the scene for a long time. It was the very first video that I like ever did. On YouTube. Well, no, no, that's not true. The first knife video I did on YouTube. Wasn't a 940. That's a good guess, though. That, look how good that flip still, man. Four-year-old knife. Boop. No, not this one. Not the ZT-900. That was an old video, though. It was not a ZT. 
It's actually a knife brand that I don't review a lot. I mean, I, I shouldn't say that. I haven't done a video on the knife of theirs for a while, but I have done a decent amount of videos on this brand. Um, and this knife, and this was the first like knife, like actual review that I ever did on YouTube back in 2013, which is crazy to think about. I was not a Chris Reeve. I wish I wasn't into Chris Reeve at the time I started this channel. I got into him later, as most people do. It's kind of there's like the gateway drug brands of Spyderco and Kershaw, and you know, um, I think my first high end knife was a, a ZT, honestly. Um, as far as production knives, then I got into, you know, obviously I eventually got into Sabenzas. Um, M16 Logan, nope. I don't think I've actually ever reviewed that knife before. Delica is a good guess. It's not correct though. Okay. I'm going to tell you this brand is, let's see if you guys can guess it. This brand, I'll give you the brand hint. They are out of Germany, but they also make knives in China. That's the brand of the knife. This is going to be easy. That's actually pretty easy. You guys will probably get this. So brand is made, uh, is a German brand. Yes, okay, that is correct, Blade Center. It is Boker. Now think back on um, the brand of the knife that I reviewed first was Boker. Correct. Think back um, 2013, so it's an older knife. I mean, you're talking six years ago, and it was a collaboration with the custom knife maker. Good guess. The Quaken is a good guess. It's not the Quaken. Older than the Quaken, actually. Older. And this knife suffered from a good amount of issues back in the day. So it is a Boker. Six years ago, about. And it suffered epicenter. Gun Cotton One got it. That is correct. It was the Boker Epicenter. It was the first knife you. I didn't even know that. I had to go back and like look at that, and I was like, that's crazy. The first knife video I did on YouTube was on the Boker Epicenter that had horrible lock rock. <laughs> it's so bad. Like the lock interface on those knives was so bad. And I was like kind of new into knives at that time. That was one of the nicer knives I ever got. I love the Todd Rexford design of the Epicenter. I wish that was one that ZT would have made because they did a lot of Rexford collaborations and see you later GM6 yeah tons of issues with the epicenter so that was the first knife I ever reviewed so pretty crazy right all right guys so we're about halfway through and I said I'm gonna do a knife sale um I'm actually doing a live knife sale I've never done a live knife sale but I'm going to tonight because um I was gonna do a video I only have like four knives for sale so not a ton but I thought, you know, those on the chat can kind of get first dibs and um, on those knives if you're, if you're interested. There's four available, three folders and one fixed blade. And I just realized that I'm going to have to um, multitask here while I do this. Because I have listed these knives on social media before this video. And I want to make sure that I don't put different prices. <laughs> oh, really? My iPad doesn't have Facebook installed. Rip. How about Instagram? So bear with me, but I'll put them out here. I've got three folders. All very nice. That D10, though. It, like, flies out of there. Before I give prices, though, I want to um, make sure that I do the prices right. I don't want to... Prices right. <laughs> That's funny. Sorry, I'm just logging into my... I don't, even, I don't ever log into Instagram because it just like automatically logs you in. I hope this is my password. Ah, uh, incorrect password. Rip. Let's try. Oh, I hate that I say that all the time. Rip. Nope. All right. 
Gonna have to go off memory here unless someone's got Instagram pulled up. The bag letter, yes, that is one of the knives for sale. So you've got the uh, Artesian Cutlery Archeo. This is the small uh, M390 blade steel on this. It's got the carbon fiber overlay or inlay, I guess, um, black titanium. So it's got that coating, the black coating on the titanium. Really good looking design, designed by Mallory Designs. So this is a smaller one, um, really nice action on this guy. Pretty smooth, nice detent. Seen very little use, very little carry. It has been used, all these knives have actually been carried and used, but not a, what I would say a ton. Um, the next one is the Real Steel. This is the S5 Metamorph. And this one is crazy smooth. I mean, like the action on this thing is ridiculous. Some ceramic bearings. It's got good centering. Um, seen a little bit of carry in use. There's going to be some snail trails on the. Let's see. Am I not live? On my iPad, it didn't go live. So I'm trying to follow along in the comments. So hopefully, I'm not missing anything here. Sorry, guys. Yep, okay, there we are. We're caught up. All right. So let's see if you can see the snail trail. There's going to be one. It's like right here. So there's, this is just titanium handle knife. They're going to have a few little snail trails on them. Just normal use and carry. And then we've got the bag letter titanium, the tanto blade. Um, it's got a super strong detent. Thank you, Blade Centered. Oh, that was so nice of you because I, for some reason, I don't, and I, I'm using my phone to stream, so I can't pull up. And I had them written down, but I had them written down wrong. It was weird. Okay, so the prices are, thank you so much for this, Blade Center, by the way. $190 for the Artesian cutlery. That's about, I think, $230 or more on uh, most sites. These prices are somewhat negotiable as well. $125 for the Real Steel S5 Metamorph. And $110 for the Kaiser. And these are, I think these go for $150. So they're all about $40 to $50 off retail for you guys. Now I do have a fixed blade knife that I'm gonna bring out right now, real quick. And um, this came from a battle box. Get that out of the frame, what's that doing in there? I've got my iPad over here to look, watch the comments, so. I don't know why I get an LOL 110 because that's a crazy good deal on the knife, but all right. Um, this is a fixed blade by Lord and Field Outfitters. It's called the Frontiersman. It's actually really nice. Um, it's got a nice leather sheath. It can go scout carry or vertical. You got a fire steel, and it is uh, 10.95, I believe. High carbon steel. It actually doesn't say, which is just fantastic. I love when they don't mark the blades. Like you're just supposed to memorize what steel this knife is. Yep. I, hold on. I got a card right here. I'm pretty like 90 cent. It's either 10.95 or D2. 1095. I was right. Woohoo. So you got a 1095 fixed blade with micarta handles. It's just got oil and stuff on it. It has never been used. Uh, nice micarta handles. It's actually got a really comfortable handle. And underneath these scales, there's like a little Allen wrench that's magnetically hidden in here. And underneath there is like a survival type kit type thing that's under there. So pretty cool. Fixed blade. I just have so many and I, I just love that GSO so much that's all I really use and it's about this is the same kind of knife so this one uh, I'm selling for 75 bucks is that what I 78 dollars just to cover shipping um so okay a typo on the lol and it's interesting yeah this is actually a pretty interesting knife uh it's a pretty nice little fixed blade 1095 steel it has like the built-in like little compartments and the handles um I mean you can't, it's not a bad deal at all. I think Battlebox sells these for 100 and, 120, 130 bucks. 129 is what I think they sell for. So you can get it for 78 bucks. That's going to cover shipping. All these prices include shipping. They do not include PayPal fees. Um, and if you guys want one of these knives, you can put it in the comments. But best thing to do is email me. And my email address is w Tyler. T Y L E R H A N S E N at Gmail. That's also my PayPal. Don't be sending PayPal though until you know a knife is for for sure available. But I'll put this in the description once this this goes live. But uh, yeah, 
These are all for sale. No, I do will accept some trades on these too, guys. If you have a few different knives I was looking for, and I wrote them all down on Instagram post, and I can't see it, but I know I was interested in the um, Archbishop by Farron Forge, the HEA Designs Hunter. Those are like my top two, I'd say. Um, there was a couple others that you could go back and look at my Instagram post. I don't remember. Um, <laughs> Toad sticker, I do. Uh, you missed the video earlier. I actually um, was talking about the Glock 48 that I just recently got. So, But I am doing more gun content on the channel, as you've probably noticed, basically based on like a lot of the other videos. Um, I succumbed a little while ago to this YouTube crap that they were doing with you know gun channels and I kind of took it out of my name and kind of didn't do videos on it and I decided forget it I like doing the videos um and I'm gonna keep doing them you know what I mean and sometimes they monetize them sometimes they don't and whatever doesn't matter to me because I do enjoy those videos so I'm glad you like them glad this glad that there's people that want to see that content besides just knives so so these are the four knives I have for sale guys um again um, Eric, it's, yes, I will list it in the description, but I can't do it right now. But if you look a few, um, if you look up in the comments, Blade Centered actually put all the prices for me because you looked it up on Instagram, so I really appreciate that. But the Artesian Cutlery Archeo, this is the small, is 190 The real still S5 Metamorph um, is 125 and the Kaiser Beg Letter uh, Titanium is 110 and then this fixed blade, the Lord and Field um, Frontiersman is what they call it. It's got a nice, nice leather sheath. Um, fire steel. Good, make a great, you know, bushcraft outdoor style knife. It's got the ferro rod um, striker right there. Really comfortable handle. Then you've got um, a hidden Allen wrench in here that you can unscrew these screws on the handle. And there's these pockets in here that store um, like survival items. Yes, I will give you a close-up on the Kaiser, Jeff Jewel. Hold on a second. Let me put this back in its sheath. Yes, Damon, I do guns, light, knives, flashlights, all that stuff. I still do flashlight reviews quite often. Um, haven't for a little bit, but... Uh, Sharp Dad is getting on your money. Did you buy that, Toad Sticker, did you buy that um, Archbishop from him? Curious. Or did you buy his Hunter? I can't remember. No, that's about his Hunter. Uh, Kaiser, that's right. Close up. So let me wipe off the blade because it's got some fingerprints on it. And then you can see the condition of it and stuff. So there's kind of a delay on this video that I'm watching on my um, iPad. But the blade is in pristine condition. And the handle is... Um, I can't really... There's like a little, little snail trail here. But pretty much a like like new condition knife it does have tons of lightning pockets. It only weighs like two point nine ounces for this big of a knife. It's pretty crazy, and it's got a strong detent. It flips out really well, as you can see. So strong detent on that guy. That's a really good deal on that. Um, those are one hundred fifty plus, and it's pretty much new. So the three folders are all. I don't know what you mean by that. All right, so Jet Fuel is going to buy the Kaiser. So the Kaiser bag letter is sold. So thanks for sending me an email. And if I don't hear from you, I'll, I'll leave it in the description and stuff. But 110 bucks on the Kaiser, sold. Comes with the box and everything. You're good on that. Um, they are great knives. All of them are good. I just I have so many, and I try to bring ch new knives in for the channel all the time. So all the money that I ever do on knife sales, 95% of the time it comes back into the channel somehow or another. Whether it be a gun related item, whether it be a flashlight, whether it be a knife. Typically it's knives um, that I usually, I pulled the Kaiser off because it's going to be sold here. So I'll put it off to the side so you guys don't aren't tempted by it. Let me pull this out of the box. I'll just have it sitting here. I don't know why I keep unboxing it and boxing it and I could just have it sitting here. A nice fixed blade. I don't know why it came with a striker for the ferro rod when there's a ferro rod striker on the blade, but whatever. Um, 
Yeah, they are good good folders, man. They're all they're all really good knives. They're all in excellent condition. I can tell you this this real steel is like stupid smooth. Like if I I can't barely get my thumb out of the way fast enough for that thing to close. It's it's great. Oh, you bought his Fortis. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm looking at his Archbishop. So um, that is carbon fiber on the Artesian, Bob. That is a nice really really well done carbon fiber inlay like really seamless no gaps there's no voids in the carbon fiber or anything it's really well done uh artesian cutlery did a really good job in this knife so you know what's cool about this knife and i hate i almost don't want to sell it because of it but um the guy that designed this dylan mallory has been a long time subscriber to my youtube channel and he ended up designing a knife and having it produced by artesian color heat and there's obviously a big version of this and there's like a g10 uh d2 version so pretty cool that you know a guy that's been watching my channel for a long time reviewed it did a knife and i reviewed his knife and now i'm selling his knife <laughs> um it's not because i don't like it i really do like it i just like i said i stick to my base i stick to my like kind of core edc knives and then i'll review other knives and sometimes they kick knives out of my rotations and sometimes they don't so uh, that is carbon fiber on the artesian so yeah if you guys are interested this this video will go live um once it's done streaming and i'll put all in the description i'll put the prices and stuff and then what's sold um obviously the kaiser sold um cool jet fuel i'll let you know well i won't see it on my phone because it's recording this chat but i may get it on my ipad here um but i'll look out for that and then i'll, I'll send you the payment information Bob, what is my newest folder? Not one of these, because we went over this earlier in the video, if you just joined. A lot of these folders that are kind of in the background are actually the oldest knives I have in my collection. Um, some of them from over four years ago, which I know for a lot of guys is insane a lot. Like a lot of guys are like, I've had knives for 15 years, you know, whatever. But I, I buy, sell, and trade a lot. Um, newest folder that I got, is it my smock? I mean, I've reviewed the, the Buck Spitfire, and I've returned that because it had a horrible detent. Um, I sold the Fastball. And those were my latest two purchases. Um, probably the Smock, honestly. I haven't bought something new in a while. Uh, Toad Sticker, I have a video coming out on the Super Freak... I think in the next couple days it'll be released. Um, it is a good knife, definitely. The Drunken. That is that stinking crazy expensive Spyderco. I don't know. It's so pricey. I don't know if I'm going to buy it. Um, yeah, this one's not going to be for sale. This one I had customized. Um, I had this one customized for me by Fanatic Edge. He did like the engraving of the Mandalorian skull and then the Cerakoting. This one honestly doesn't really get carried that often, just like special occasions, like like when it's May the 5th, you know, Star Wars Day or if a new Star Wars movie comes out or some kind of related thing. There is the new Mandalorian um, TV series that's launching this summer. They just filmed, um, they finished camera work on it, I believe. So yeah, pretty awesome. I am liking the smock. I still have it, and I am going to get some custom micarta scales made for it. They're actually being made right now. Oh, that reminds me. In the next little buy, it'll, I will buy Drunken if it reviews well. I know. Um, I am swapping out the scales on this 940 to those titanium ones from Rock Scale Design. They're on their way. They should be here, I think, Monday or Tuesday. I have a crazy busy work week this week, so... I am, you'll see videos come up, but there will be like previously recorded, just scheduled videos. I have to do that to keep up. Um, full EDC dump. I, I don't have it all in front of me, man, but um, this is what I carried today. This is the my EDC knife for today. The small Sabenza with the red micarta overlay um, in lambing um, from Knife Ship Free. This is what I carried today. And lately, my concealed carry pistol has been a SIG 365. But at the beginning of the video, I actually talked about my new pistol, the, the G48 from Glock. Uh, but this is the pistol I've been carrying and the holster I've been carrying it in. This is an appendix carry rig um, from McKinnitech Holsters. I do have a discount code if you're interested in a, a really, really high quality 
um, but not terribly expensive. Usually rigs like this run over a hundred bucks or more. I think him, they're at 85 and that's before the discount code. So, um, carry that. Uh, I don't have my ABC flashlights. I did it last, I mean, one of my last live streams I did go over that, but I've been, I'm going to start carrying the G, the Glock 48 as well. Um, I am in sales. There's someone that just asked me what I do for work. Uh, I'm in the healthcare industry and in software sales. So it's kind of sum it up. Tomorrow I'm going to be carrying the Red DLT Trading Manix 2. Nice. I haven't had a Manix 2 in years. It's just a little too big for me. I like smaller knives though. So hence I'm carrying a small Sabenza. Favorite traditional tilt sticker. I have not been into traditionals for a while. I would I would always say it's a GEC. And probably the number 15 pattern, boys knife. But I don't have any of them anymore. I sold them all off. I just never carry slip joints. I was into them for a while and just for some reason haven't carried them. Oh, and you know what? Someone asked me what my latest blade was. I forgot about it. Um, I had to send it back, but I got another one coming tomorrow as a replacement. It's the James brand Folsom in green micarta scales. I had to send the first one I got back because it had some really bad centering issues. So they sent me a new one already. Their customer service was flipping awesome. I'm going to do a video on it because I was so impressed by how fast they responded, how fast they took care of the solution, and they're going to have a new knife in my hand tomorrow. Nice talking to you, Jet Fuel. I will uh, hit you up on email about the payment and everything for that, Kaiser. Thanks for purchasing that. Okay, so let me catch up on these comments. These are, uh, to drunken. I don't know about the drunken, like I said. It's so expensive. I don't know about that one. Um, any plans to change the scales on my bug out? I have already done that, and I went back to the FRN because what I love about the bug out is it's so lightweight, and that's really what it was designed to be, right? You know, it was designed to be an extremely lightweight EDC knife that had a, was still a good size, like not too small. And I carry this mostly in, like, gym shorts, sweatpants, stuff like that, because it's so lightweight. And that's all really... But it gets carried probably... I work from home. <laughs> it probably gets carried a ton. Uh, it probably gets carried more than any of my knife I have, actually. So um, I had the Rock Scale Designs Titanium Scales. I also had the carbon fiber ones by rogue blade works so i've had those if i could find a nice set of my carta scales for this i might change them again though um but i just i don't know i really like the frn on this i don't love frn usually but i just love how lightweight the knife is so um i'm like i said i'm doing the titanium swap on this um this week so yeah i actually wouldn't mind picking up another bug out with like some different color i like the ranger green but i wouldn't mind getting another bug out with maybe a uh like what's the name of that company in cal edc specialties maybe that does rit dyed ones and they have like a burgundy or a they call it a black cherry color of rit dyed scales for the bug out i love that one um i know zach stuff i'm surprised he's not on the ch channel or the stream tonight he's got um He's got, I have an 8015 Damon. I did a video on it. It's just not on this table right now, but I do have an 8015. And I did do a review on that knife. And I love that knife. That's actually one of my newer folders for this year as well. And I really dig it. It was, it was, it was surprising. Like, I'll tell you a little story on that one. It's my buddy's knife. He's a huge Cold Steel fan. He buys like every freaking Cold Steel knife ever made. Like, he just loves Cold Steel. So uh, he bought the 8015 and I reviewed it. And I had it for, I don't know, a week or so. He just let me borrow it right when he got it. And um, I fell in love with that knife. And I actually bought him a new one and just kept his. Because I got it, I dialed in the action like perfectly on it. And I used it quite a bit. So I didn't want to you know, give him back a used knife. So I bought him a new one because I enjoyed it so much. It's actually one of my favorite knives of 2018. Or what? No, we're not in 18. Dude. 19. Um, yes, you can die FRN. Uh-huh. A lot of people do it. Um, so yeah, the 8015 is awesome and one of my favorite knives of this year so far. Uh, one of the better values, I think, too, for the price. So let me think, guys, if there's anything else um, chat about. We have like 10 minutes left. You're welcome, Gun and Cotton. I don't, I've never done Rit Dye, actually. I don't think it's very hard, though. 
you can buy it at Walmart. Um, and it might be something to experiment with, but I like the Ranger Green a lot, so I just kind of keep it that way. Swig Shink Shack, what's up, man? Um, thanks for joining the chat. We're actually close to wrapping up. Uh, I might do. I might go a little bit over. I know Slicey Dicey didn't do his chat tonight, so um, yeah. I don't. I'm trying to think of what I have new coming in. I mean, I have that James Brand Folsom that's getting comes in tomorrow. They'll have the Green Martardis scales. Um, that'll be that's a replacement knife, but that's I think the last. Oh, then I have some knives coming in from the pass around group that I'm part of. Um, Toad Sigger, you know what, dude? The titanium scales that he makes, they only make the knife weigh like three ounces. I know it's a little bit lighter with the G Gen G10 and the C Tech. But now here's the beautiful thing. I can always go back to them. You know what I mean? I won't get rid of the scales. And I really want to see, I think the red thumb stud with the red barrel spacers will be really cool with titanium. So, hey, Swigs, what's up, man? Um, thanks for the, the heads up on the, um, or thanks for the kind words, I should say. Some of these knives are for sale since you just joined. Um, these two are for sale. Well, actually, all three of these are for sale uh, if you're interested in any of these. So, they're all pretty good prices, um, I think, and they're all available at the moment, so. Um, yeah, um, I've always wanted a Titanium 940, though, Toad Sticker, and when I saw those scales, I'm like, I gotta have them. Yeah, so I missed the first batch of them, too. Pretty bummed. But I think it's gonna look really cool with the... And it only adds, like, a small amount of weight. I mean, let's see if my scale is handy. I've got... So much crap. Um, yeah, the Encosis are tanks, man, for sure. I, I like them a lot, but they are a little tankier than the uh, 21s. This scale doesn't go all, like past a certain weight. Let me see here. Let's put those aside. Let's close those so I don't cut myself on camera. What did this guy weigh? So it weighs 2.53 ounces. Um, with the titanium scales, it's 3.1. So it's 0. 0.6 ounces, which is a decent amount. But again, I've always wanted it. But considering they're titanium, he did so much milling on them to make them that light that it's pretty impressive, I think. So that's going to be awesome, I think. I'm excited for that. That'll be this week. If I have time with work and stuff, I've got a lot going out of town and... That I'm going on spring break vacation with my kiddos, so it's gonna be crazy busy. But you'll still see videos coming up because I've got them scheduled out. I think through April, so I've done a lot, done a lot of stuff lately. Um, yeah, anything? Uh, yeah, I like the C Tech. I think it looks cool with the black and the red. Um, some people don't love C Tech. Some people think it looks cheap. I think it looks cool, but I may get another 940 and put. The C Tech scales on that, and then um, you know, keep one as a titanium one G10. I might do that because they're not exactly like hard to get or anything. <laughs> yes, I have seen the Smoky Mountain Knife Works Special 940. I absolutely love it, but I am no way in heck paying that price. Um, that thing is crazy, it's crazy expensive. Like, I just I can't wrap my head around the money there. Um, the vacation's going to be in southern Utah. Yeah, I've actually had Bark River Sea Tech before. What would be your top hard use folder? It's got to be that 8015. Or my Hinder XM18, but I'm going to say they, the, 80, the 8015, man. I mean, that thing is a beast. <laughs> I think I can take a beating. But I'd definitely go with the 8015 as the, the, my, my, the one of all the, the knives that I own. The 8015 would be my top hard use folder. So I'm getting thirsty. Did I, go, I think I had a drink down here. Yeah, I do. All righty. Well, fire away, guys. Any questions? I don't really have anything else um, that I'm talking about or anything. So if you have any questions for me, let's do like a Q&A session or something. That would be cool. 
Yeah, Damon, you can um, really dial in the 8015. Just keep in mind, it does have two pivots to kind of mess with. Um, stabilized pine cone handles. I don't think I've ever seen those. That sounds like something Park River would do. Freedom Van, I highly recommend a cold steel. Um, I mean, the ones you're, you're putting up there are all, you know, budget knives, which are great. Um, and, but I think you can get a cold steel Voyager. The new Voyager has a, like a new steel upgrade and it's a pretty good hard use knife. Um, Damon, yes, you, you don't have to, but I did adjust both sides and it, it smoothed it out better. Um... Stabilized pinecone. I'm curious now. I want to see a picture. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that before, so we'll have to check that out. But yeah, Freedom Band, if you like, you know, budget knives and you want to get something you want a hard to use, I think a cold steel pretty hard to beat. The Fin Wolf's another good one too. This art this art using color is smooth for sure. But this guy, man, that thing is just like, whoop. Pineapple on pizza. <laughs> not my favorite, but I like, I'll eat it. I like a Hawaiian pizza, but not my favorite. Not my top choice by any means. So I don't mind pineapple on pizza, no. But it's not my top. Like, I'm not going to be like, I want to order pizza. Let's get, um, you know, Hawaiian. Not, not usually my first pick. But, um, I do like pineapple on pizza. I like other toppings better, so, but. Chicken and pineapple, yeah. So Papa John's Pizza makes a good barbecue chicken pizza with pineapple on it. That is tasty. I'm a big fan of that pizza. You make me want to go eat pizza. <laughs> and I just had dinner, like, before this, uh, chat, so. All right, guys, well, <sighs> anything else before I wrap it up for the night? I'll do one last, uh, um, keto diet is keeping away from food. You know what I'm doing actually right now is, is intermittent fasting. Matt Damon, I've done keto before. Uh, I was effective with when I used a shake that would kind of put your body in ketosis, but, um, Right now I'm trying an intermittent fasting thing and it seems to be going pretty well. I just started it though. So talk to me in a week or two. Tell me, ask me how it's going. But for now I don't have, it hasn't been too bad. So I don't eat till like 10, 30 and then AM and then I don't, I stop eating at like 7.30 I think is what it is. Maybe it's 6.30. I don't know, somewhere around there. So. Wow, you're doing keto and intermittent fasting. That's a lot. Um, I gained back some weight after doing ketos, but I've heard that intermittent fasting, like I've actually had a few physicians tell me and some friends that were doing it. Like I had a buddy that's been doing it for a while and he went in for a checkup and they, he asked him about it. You know, what is this a good thing to be doing? And he said, um, Carbidize on IG. IG. Okay, I'll check it out. Carbidize. I know that name. Carbidize. I know that name. How do I know that name? Um, but intermittent fasting is actually uh, recommended by doctors and physicians and stuff. So I know a lot of those diets are gonna be uh, kind of crazy. Some. I mean, I don't think intermittent fasting necessarily messes up your metabolism. Metabolism. It can just change your metabolism. So if your metabolism isn't great, it can kind of help you. Um, yeah, I mean, essentially what it is, and it can go into starvation mode. So your body's eating your fat, <laughs> essentially. It's kind of layman's terms, I guess, the way to, de to describe it. So um, I would definitely say it's not. Later, Toad Sticker. Thanks for stopping by, buddy. I'll watch your video. 
All right, guys, I think I'm going to wrap it up for the night. Um, no, I, I don't. I've been doing intermittent fasting. I, I weight lift five days a week, and I have not um, seen any kind of loss in fat or muscle mass at all. Um, unless you're talking about ketos. I'm not sure what you're talking about, but I don't know. I've My buddy that does intermittent fasting, he's been doing it for like six months, and he's pretty ripped. So, um, anyway. I'm going to wrap up the video. And thanks for watching tonight, guys. Appreciate you stopping by. And I will um, post this video live. And if you guys are interested, if you didn't get a chance to join the chat and you wanted to, um, you know, purchase one of these knives, it's available. Let me know. And, then, and I'll leave my email in the description. You can send me an email. Thanks for watching. And see you next week.